Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Happy Mother's Day. Today we're gonna paint this pretty blue jay in colored pencils. And I have a real-time version of this over on Critique Club. I'll put a link to that in the video description if you are interested in that. This painting took me about an hour and 45 minutes and um, I'm working on sanded pastel paper. This is by UART. I'm using some colored pencils by Cezanne. They're a pretty affordable colored pencil, but you could use whatever you like. And I'm also using some products by Brush and Pencil. The reference photo I'm using is from the artist photo reference library the songbirds collection and I will link that down below there are used copies on Amazon this series of books is out of print but it is wonderful so I collected mine used on Amazon over the course of a few months so just kind of keep your eyes peeled and you can usually pick them up fairly reasonably um, I think I paid the most for the Songbirds one. All the other ones I got for under 10 bucks, I think I paid 25 for that one, but definitely worth the price to have um, a good collection of reference photos at your fingertips without having to go online and all of that. So I'm starting off by putting some of this powder blender on my sanded paper. And this sanded paper feels like sandpaper. So if you wanted to practice and you didn't want to um, go out and buy this fancy paper, you could just get some 400 grit sandpaper from the hardware store and give it a try. Now, of course, that's not going to be acid free, but it will definitely give you the feel for it and see if it's something you want to invest in. I'm going in very loosely putting in some pigment here, different shades of green, and um, I like to use these uh, less expensive pencils for this technique, especially while, while I'm practicing and I don't intend on selling my work, um, because it can really chew down your pencils. So that's something I want to just kind of uh, make you aware of, that it will use up your pencils a lot faster. Then what I'm doing is taking a sponge applicator, I'm just using the ones I have for my pan pastel and applying a little more powder blender and look how it turns that colored pencil pigment into almost like a pastel. Now of course you could do your underpainting with a pan pastel or with chalk pastels on that sanded paper and you could work over it that would be totally fine but it's kind of fun to be able to do this all with one media. Now as you can see as I'm building up the next layer the colors are getting more richer and saturated and it's also a very quick way to fill in a background with colored pencils that tend to um, tend to take a while generally. Now I'm here on my third layer now I want to let you know if you're watching this in Critique Club, I did, uh, I showed one of the layers in real time and then um, I just kind of, I didn't show every single layer in real time because that would have been a long, long time. So I am keeping all of these layers in the time lapse version for you to see. So don't worry if you're watching the, the uh, real time version on Critique Club, you're not going to have to watch me do all these layers in real time. Now I like to overlap colors to just give me a nice rich um, blend between the dark and light tones. It's um, it's just gives you a really nice look. That way it's not so patchy and it just kind of looks like a blurred out background. And that's what I'm going for. This kind of like just blurred out foliage in the background. And I wanted to keep these layers in here so you can kind of see how long it takes to kind of build that up and how much you want to put down to get that saturation of colors. Now in between each layer, after I smudge it out, I am spraying it with fixative. Um, I'm using the brush and pencil fixative, which I really like, the texture fixative. It is a bit on the pricey side. I think it's around $15 a can, but um, but it will last you quite a while. And if you buy that and your can seems to be clogged, all you got to do is take the nozzle off, soak it in warm water, and it will work again. So um, I just wanted to let you know in case you have that product and you've noticed that it like you can't get it to spray, soak the nozzle, you'll be good as new. Another fixative I like that's much more affordable would be the Krylon workable fixative. You can find that at most craft stores and on Amazon and on Blick and uh, Jerry's, well, I assume on Jerry's, pretty much any big box um, store online should have that for around $6 a can. So it's about half the price uh, or even lower depending on um, you know where you're comparing your products. So you know there's definitely different ways to do it. And you know if you're painting on sandpaper, you're not worried about it, good old Aquanet, man, that'll fix it in between layers. So, you know, use what you have. Um, now, I like this. Uh, these pencils, these Cezanne pencils, I reviewed them last week on my YouTube channel. They say they have good light fastness, so maybe selling this wouldn't be a problem if I wanted to. But um, I am a little skeptical of light fast claims from companies that don't offer, like, the, the documentation on it. So, you know, that's just, you know, buyer beware and whatnot. But I do colored pencils for fun. Um, and... Uh, I'm not that concerned with that. I can always take a photo of it if I'm that concerned. 
And at this point, I'm just about finishing up the background. Now, something I'm noticing is that I am starting to get a little bit of a glare, a wax glare, and I think it's because I am like saturating this paper and I'm starting to see some of the wax on the paper kind of shine a little bit. Now, something that I found that's really helpful working with colored pencil that you might find helpful too is to work on a board that you can tip. So I've got this plywood, plywood um, board that my husband made me with a little lip on the front. It's got an angle in the back and I actually have another piece of wood I can put underneath that to raise it up a little bit more. And being able to angle that really helps uh, avoid the glare from your lighting. Uh, so and if you're somebody who likes to work in coloring books, things like that, um, you may notice with pencils, you're gonna get that glare just angling your, your a book or your sketch pad or your paper. That can really save your eye strain and uh, make it much more comfortable and easier to like ascertain what your values are. Now you can slightly adjust things here. You don't need to, if you're just doing a little bit of adjustment, you don't need to fix it a bit. But um, if I'm doing a whole layer, I will put fixative on it just so that I can layer up and not worry about having um, having stuff get kind of scraped off the surface. Now for the post here, it's a much quicker process. I'm just kind of putting in some streaky shades of gray and like raw sienna, browns, things like that. And uh, just kind of blending as I go. It's a smaller area. I want to keep that like kind of um, stripy texture. So it looks like kind of dried out wood, like a post, like a fence post. Um, so it does not require the amount of blending that I did in the background. I honestly think the background took me longer than the actual subject to paint. And, and I think it was just because I was trying to build those saturated colors. And um, with the Blue Jay, it was a much easier. I was using a little more pressure. Use very light pressure on the background. Now that's something else I wanted to mention. If you're someone who loves the look of colored pencil, loves to work with it, but it gives you um, like hand strain, working on a sanded paper is nice because it just grabs so much color because of the abrasion of the paper. So you have don't have to use very much pressure at all. And um, it just pulls that color from your pencil. Now, like I mentioned before, it will wear your pencils down quicker, but um, but you'll get that rich saturated color much quicker with much less strain on your wrists. So if you've got a pair, if you've got a, like a set of pencils that are just gathering dust on your shelf because they bother your wrists to use them, get a piece of sanded paper, give it a try. Um, I think the pad of 10 sheets of the sanded paper that I have, and I'm only using a half a sheet here, I think it was around $25. So it's it's not cheap, but it's not so expensive and you're not going through it so fast that it's a big burden, I don't think. Um, you know, we use it, use your resources wisely, obviously. Um, but I think it's a nice investment if you think you like this type of artwork. So I'm putting in some of my brightest contrasts. I'm putting in my black and white. I'm getting the legs in and I'm getting the uh, the black feathers. I'm also putting in the white parts on the, um, on the Blue Jay because I want to make sure that I can almost, uh, it's almost like a masking fluid. It's almost like a resist. I want to make sure I am defining those areas and committing to them. So I've, if I've got that nice white and black on the paper right there, then um, that's going to be what color is dominant and what sticks the most. So I try to do that. I do that with oils too. I find that working with colored pencil is so similar to working with oil paints um, in the method which I lay things down and the method, the color schemes that I would use. Um, so I think this would be a very natural uh, bridge medium to go from drawing to painting, especially if you're going to use oil paints. Um, maybe you want to try some oil techniques or you want that kind of look of oils, but you don't want the mess, you don't want the solvents, you want something you can pick up and put down, not worry about things drying on you, that sort of thing. Colored pencils might be a really nice option for you. And I think that a lot of people think of colored pencils kind of like their kid's Crayola pencils and um, they don't realize the kind of artwork that you can make with them. There's really so many talented colored pencil artists out there to inspire you on YouTube. Um, so have a look around and uh, if you've got some neglected pencils, give them a try. You know, you might be really surprised with what you can create. I love how your pencils will layer and blend. Now, like I'm, I mentioned before, these are not an expensive uh, line of pencils. This is uh, was a hundred and twenty set. It retails for I think um, uh, under sixty bucks, which you know I wouldn't say is cheap, but for hundred and twenty pencils, that's not bad. That's going to last you a long time. But um, another brand that I like that's very affordable is the like twenty dollar Art and Fly set of forty eight oil based colored pencils. They will work perfectly with this technique, and they're very pigmented. They're actually I think they might even be a notch higher quality than the Cezanne ones. And so for twenty bucks, you can really get um, 
get the feel for it and see if it's something you'd like to invest further in. Um, for artwork that I want to be really, um, I want to make sure is going to last, I will use my Polychromos pencils, but those are more expensive, so I'm a little bit precious about them and I don't use them so much for, um, for practice. Now, as I've been painting the bird, I did not put down the color pencil powder blender before I started adding the color pencils because I really wanted that pigment to grab the paper and, and not get blended out. I wanted to keep some of the texture of the feathers and you can see how quickly that color was able to be built up on the feathers and um, overlaid and I didn't I didn't even need to put any fixative on the um, the picture as I was working on the bird. So that sanded paper is going to grab so much color. I honestly think the background took me longer than anything else in this project. Um, but it was I had to actually stop my uh, my filming and look back to see if I missed a clip because it seemed like you know the bird was colored in no time and it you know honestly was compared to the background. Um, because you can lay down so much color. Now when you're looking at things like bird feathers, you're going to notice that there's like an iridescent quality and what you want to do is look for all of those undertones, all those little flecks of color. You're going to see turquoise, you're going to see um, fuchsia, you're going to see indigo, you're going to see royal blue, you're going to see all these different colors kind of um, in that blue spectrum just reflected in the wings. So to get that iridescent look, you want to um, try to represent all those colors. That's much more effective than just grabbing a metallic um, blue pencil which is gonna just lack all of those subtle undertones so um really just look and see what colors you can pick out and magnify them and you know kind of uh, boost them a little bit um, boost the saturation so that you can um, you can really make a statement and make that look a little bit extra special because you know as an artist I think we see details differently sometimes and if we can uh, amplify those details and show them to others then they can kind of look through your eyes and and get your perspective on the world and um, I think that's a that's a really important um, job of art is to is to do that is to give a new perspective on um, on everything. So something else I wanted to show here is um, that on the edges of the of the feathers you're going to see a little bit of a glow because like those little wisps those little wisps of feathers just like on animals little wisps of fur on the edges a lot of times they're going to catch light they're going to look a lot lighter and they're almost going to give you like a halo now with this set of pencils i will say the white is pretty weak so getting that glow with just the white pencil was not as um successful as like if i was using a white prismacolor pencil but i'm going to show you um as we go along i'm going to show you how to really get those bright whites with another brush and pencil product now this is not sponsored by brush and pencil i just um i saw lisa over at Lacquery Fine Art using it once and I um, I ended up buying those products and I just really really like them so I thought I would share it they're fun to use and uh, and obviously if you have a uh, white gel pen when I get to that stage and you want to use that go right ahead um, but it's just it's kind of nice because it won't flake off eventually like potentially gel pen or acrylic paint could so uh, so we'll get to that in a minute I'm just layering up that's how you build that depth of color that's how you get that texture that fluffiness um, those rich tones it's just by layering and layering and layering and if you're looking at your color pencil work and you're like eh, it's just so meh you're not done yet just keep layering just keep layering just keep layering and then um, you'll eventually kind of feel like the weight and the form of your object and then it will it'll look like oh yeah that's feathers so you look at the chest now on the bird versus like um a couple minutes ago a couple layers ago it has so much more just just depth and solidness to it so i've got this little dish here i put some touch-up texture which is a product that is made by brush and pencil it looks like nail polish but what it is it's an adhesive that you can mix with this white powder which is a titanium white pigment and you can make a, an archival white highlight basically paint and I'm choosing a small brush to paint those little um, glowing feathers on the edge the bright white spots on the feathers on the wings um, I think I used a little bit too much titanium white powder for the uh, touch-up texture liquid that I used but um, but it's it's working just fine I think I would uh, maybe mix it up with a bigger brush next time to make sure that uh, everything got really well incorporated but anyway uh, it doesn't take that much I had a bunch left over so you only want to mix up what you need and that way you can keep it nice and fresh um, and not waste any but look at how I can pull out those tiny little feathers I am sorry my hands kind of in the way but I've got to keep the brush straight up and down to get that really fine line 
And I am using the brushes that I would use with acrylic paints because um, I don't really know what the adhesive in that touch-up texture is. So I just didn't want to damage like my watercolor brushes. So I, I will pretty much, if I'm not sure about the medium, I will use uh, a brush that I would typically use for acrylics and I find it works pretty well. But look at how nice and bright those little wisps are. They just look so much more, um, so much more fresh, so crisp, and they give you that really nice contrast. So any place I have that nice bright white, I'm going in with that. So that would definitely be a product I would recommend if you're really serious into color pencil art um, especially if you're selling your work and you're worried that maybe your gel pen highlights or uh, gouache highlights or acrylic paint pen highlights are gonna flake off it's just a nice uh, nice thing to have I don't know about like um, I don't enter competitions with my artwork so I don't know if that would disqualify you I've heard that it might disqualify you from co color pencil competitions but um, just as far as a wonderful product I highly recommend it um, I Kind of, I was just gonna buy the powder blender and ended up buying up all the different pieces in the in the uh, the line, and I haven't regretted any of them. So, uh, but I just want to put it out there, a little product recommendation. I'll link to all these things in the video description in case you're curious about any of them. I'm adding some kind of dry brush texture to the post to make it look a little weathered, and I'm just kind of puttering around here, basically because I mixed up so much of that stuff. Uh, sometimes I go overboard because I've taken out too much paint, and then it's like, oh, I want to use it up. I did end up, and I'm not sure if it's archival or not. Um, I let that the leftover paint dry in that dish, and I added water to it, and I was able. To to reconstitute it and I used it on another painting for highlights and it seemed to work fine um, but I'm not sure if that's uh, a suggested use or not so I'm not sure if I should recommend it um, as such but it did work for me um, but on the other hand I'm not sure if, if I used too much of the powder and not enough of the adhesive maybe I was just reconstituting the powder and it doesn't have enough adhesive uh, so I don't know I was able to reconstitute it to make a long story short and I did use it but I'm not sure if that's uh if that's okay to do <laughs> but that's how we learn right we experiment we try things we see how they hold up and uh, that's how we build our our, our artsy knowledge anyway um, I'm just puttering around here uh, touching up areas I th saw a little area in the background that was kind of bare so I just touched up with the green and that little tray there it's a little velvet flocked tray it actually came with like a set of Prismacolors I got back in the 90s um, but I like it because I can put all the colors that I'm using for this project in that tray so I'm not confused with all the colors in the set so that's a handy tip just put something out where you can keep the pencils you're working with so you don't grab you grab the same blue you grab the same green um, and then everything's gonna work together and there you can see the finished painting I'm so pleased with how it came out I hope you enjoyed it and if you'd like a real-time version of this tutorial check out critique club it's five dollars a month that lets you upload two of your original paintings every month for feedback from me so you can grow as an artist and there are dozens of long more advanced tutorials there for you to enjoy as a member. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Mother's Day. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Until next time, happy crafting.